Hey everyone, Miles with Stream Elixir here. Today we're going to be starting a multi-part video series tutorial on how to use Stream Elixir and what we recommend to do to improve your success on streaming platforms such as Twitch. So once you have successfully paid and downloaded Stream Elixir and installed it, this is one of the first things you're going to encounter. Anytime there's an update, you're going to encounter a confirmation window on updating. You can see it will list your current version in the available version. We recommend you always update. It's always recommended to update because chances are it's a hot fix or some kind of patch to improve user experience. So we're going to go ahead and start with clicking yes. It will run through everything, install the program for you, close it and reopen it, and then you will be ready to go. Now we will uh, go to the top right corner and click the login button. So we do offer the ability to log in with your Google account if your Google account is the same account you registered on our website. As long as it is, as long as it's a at gmail.com, you can use this option. But once again, you do have to be registered on our website with that same email. If not, whatever email you registered and paid for the program with, you can enter here. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and log in with my Gmail. So you all can see the full user experience. I'm going to go ahead and reset all of my settings as if I'm a fresh start. So once you've logged in, sorry about that. So once you've logged in, this is going to be the first screen you encounter. This is a little wizard to help you get started. There is an option to import old settings if you're a returning user and you still have your channels file, but we'll go over that another time. For now, we're doing a fresh start. So you're going to want to click next. It's going to bring you to a Twitch authentication window. This is simply for the fact that we are a chatbot program. We work in chat. So we will request a couple scopes from you that gives us the ability to read your chat information and the program can respond. So you'll enter your username and password, you'll press login, it will send you your 2FA, and then you'll click authorize. After you have authorized, this is what you're going to see. You're going to be encountering a window that looks exactly like this right here. This is a simple tutorial that goes over all of the required need to know things in the program, but we're going to skip that since I'm going over it myself. Um, after that window is closed, this window is going to pop up. This is the global lurk list registration window. The global lurk list is something that we have implemented into the program, and what it does is it gives you everyone that has the program on your list. So what's going to happen is if you click yes, everyone else who has the program is going to immediately be on your lurk list and you're going to be on theirs in return. It does take about 30 minutes to sync up with everyone else that has the program, but that is the effect that will come. Now, there is a few different things that come with being on the GLL, which you can see listed in this panel here. Um, it is against Elixir TOS to IRC ban users on this list if you choose to opt in. And there's a few other things, but if you just read over this, it will explain everything you need to know about it. But this is a feature I personally highly recommend because the more people you have on your list, obviously the higher of a success rate you are going to have in return. 
So I'm going to go ahead and click yes. It's going to bring up a confirmation window. I'm going to click yes again. And you'll once again be on this screen. You will not have left this page right here. But you're going to get about 130 and some change users. Uh, all of those will be Stream Elixir users. So let's get on to uh, what this page here is about. This is the people page or your lurk list page. There's a few different things that go on on this page. Um, this is your notifications located here at the top. As you can see, notifications. Uh, you can filter your lurk list channels. So I can type in NASCAR and it's going to filter NASCAR Jake into the lurk list and bring you up. So you can do a few things with this right here. This red circle, this filled red circle is the live notification. This represents that that user is live and currently streaming. This is that user's avatar that is also on Twitch. And if you click that person's name, it will bring up their stream, give you a live stream, just as it would on the Twitch page. Now, we can filter this entire list based on live or most active. So, live is going to represent who's currently live streaming. Most active is going to represent who's recently typed in your chat who has been lurking you recently who's been in your stream saying something so on and so forth this plus button right here is how you manually add someone to your lurk list now say you've been doing this you know by hand the old-fashioned way popping up someone's stream and leaving it running and you want to add them to your lurk list as soon as you start the program this is the way you would do it you would type their name in here Press add. And press add. And it would put them on your lurk list. And the next lurk cycle that comes around, it's going to begin to lurk them back. Now, these two windows here, these are program output windows. These are basically a console. Whatever's going on in the program is going to be outputted here, such as when a channel file is saved when a host raffle is initiated, anything that has to do with the program is going to be outputted here. You don't necessarily need to keep track of this. Some people do, some people don't. But if you're ever wondering what is going on, what the program is doing behind the scenes, it is listed here. This type commands here feature is not exactly still a need to use thing. You really never have to use the type commands here. Every command that is in this program can be listed here on the question mark. If we scroll way down, there is the command section. But once again, all of these commands are from when this program first was created. And now there is a user interface for all of them, except one command, which I'm going to go over. The one command that you can do for the type commands here, which soon there will be a button for this, is the lurk one command. This allows you to immediately lurk one person. So you would do lurk one, space that person's name. I'm gonna use NASCAR Jake as an example. So I would type that in, press enter, and it would immediately lurk NASCAR Jake. Up here we have statistics. We have your all-time statistics. We have this current session stat statistics and the latest statistics. So if someone subscribes, it's going to be listed here while you're offline, of course, because that would be the latest, the latest information or just the current most up-to-date information, I should say, will be listed in latest. And then your last session and, of course, once again, all-time. Um, this is statistics that the program is using your latency is your ping uh the memory usage of the program currently and then the cp usage of the program currently um once again this is going to be a multi-part tutorial so what i plan on doing is going over one button at a time and just doing a series through that so that's going to conclude the series right here uh, for the people button. Uh, I will be putting these out rather quickly. Uh, 
we're growing pretty rapidly and uh, there's a lot of questions. So hopefully I can answer anyone's questions that they may have. And you can always leave a question in the comment or hop in our discord, which will be at the bottom of the video. Uh, if you have any questions regarding us or catch us on our website at uh, streamelixer.com. Uh, thank you all. I appreciate it. I hope you all have a good day and I hope you enjoy the series.